Hey everyone, welcome to episode nine of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. If you haven't been following along, be sure to check out episodes one through eight where we go through everything from sketching to existing conditions to modeling to phasing and all kinds of awesome techniques as far as architectural design and Revit in the process that I use to uh, do a real world residential project. In our previous episode, uh, we talked about laying out this schematic design type of kitchen based on our sketch using our generic line based cabinet family and today what we're going to do is we're actually going to touch on design options uh, we're going to touch on design options twice in this series first in this episode we're going to talk about it in the sense of this schematic design sort of phase um, where it kind of becomes like our trace uh, we're able to really really quickly test out two different design options of this project um, as we develop the model further and the design further it becomes a little more refined um, and instead of looking at two sweeping different options. It's actually more like a couple little details within an option. So, so if you don't know what design options are, and I asked you, hey, I want you to show two completely different options of this kitchen. And right now what you would do is press file, save as, and make a brand new Revit copy, uh, and then model the second option, and then have the two different models, then this episode is definitely for you. Before we jump in, I did want to take a moment to thank our sponsor of this series, and that is RevitFamily.biz. Brenton Weiberg is the owner and creator of the company who creates casework, windows, doors, and all kinds of different custom residential families for your use. Be sure to check it out. Not only did uh, Brenton offered to sponsor this series, but he also offered to give you, my amazing audience, 20% off any of his families. So feel free to head on over there. Use offer code 2022 Revit Kid. Click the link in the description or the link above. Check out this video and be sure to reach out to Brenton. He's awesome and he can help you in all of your family Revit family creation needs. <music> I think the approach that I'm going to show you today is a great way to introduce you to design options. I think where design options get extremely difficult for folks to use is when you start using hosted elements. And what I mean by that is when you start using things like doors and windows, which are then hosted to walls, and then walls may be attached to, to roofs, and then it goes down this line. And what you begin to realize is that when you start making design options in Revit, um, you have to start grouping in more elements than you wanted. In the next episode, uh, when we talk about design options, which will be in a few episodes, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, hosted elements and dealing with that. Today, I just want to show you how amazingly uh, powerful the design option tool is for, for quickly looking and studying at um, overall design options. So if you guys remember the original sketch, one of the first trace sketches that I had um, that I showed you, there was two options. There was one where the the casework um, um, was all sort of parallel to the north wall and then um, looking out towards the view. And then there was another option where it was sort of perpendicular um, towards the sliding glass door. And so what I wanted to do is really just study how those options felt in, in Revit to scale and then in Enscape as well um, to either continue with both or, or sometimes, especially when it comes to work like this, um, where maybe you don't want to put too many options in front of a client, um, maybe just make a determination based on your experience feeling of, of the of architecture um, to, to determine maybe I should just study this one option and then within that maybe there's sub options so um, that's kind of what this 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 uh, whole study is about it's looking at um, these two island placements and these two unique placements of of this kitchen and then getting a feel for how I feel about the look the feel the functionality of the space from them so with all that being said I'm gonna jump right into Revit and just show you it's actually very very simple if you've never set up design option before design options before they're actually extremely simple to use you can kind of think of them as um, uh, having multiple objects in the same model in the same phase um, but turning them on and off using a design option um, so like I said it gets a little complicated when you're using walls doors and windows and things like that but when you're using regular objects it's just a matter of have, imagining these objects exist in the same space but you can actually just flip them on and off using a toggle switch so it's almost like a visibility parameter in some extent but for overall uh, objects 
So with that, I think we'll just jump right into Revit and I'll just walk you through the process of creating the design options for these this casework, this kitchen layout, and then flipping through them and then also using them in, in Enscape to sort of check out how those options feel. So what you see here is uh, this is our kitchen, right? Uh, up to this point, this is where we are. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to Manage. I'm going to go to Design Options and I'm going to create a new option set. So the, so the option set is sort of like your overall um, category for this design option. So what you can think about it is, is that you can have multiple sets if you're studying multiple things. So let's just say right now I'm doing casework, so I'm gonna make an option set for casework or cabinets. But maybe in the same model at the same time, I wanna study uh, the front windows or the front porch. Well, I would make a separate option set called front porch. And then in that, I may have option A and option B. Um, in the cabinet one, I may have option A, B, C, and D. Um, so you can think about the sets as sort of these unique portions of whatever you're studying. Um, so for this, for example, I'm writing cabinet design um, and my option one is primary and then I'm gonna rename it um, north wall most likely. I'm renaming it long gallery, galley kitchen um, and then I'm gonna create a new option. I'm gonna rename it option two and I'm going to rename this short galley kitchen um, northwest whatever. So now I have two design options. No elements are in them yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select my cabinets. I'm gonna go to manage add to set and I'm actually going to add them to both sets. So there's sort of different ways you can approach adding elements to a design option. If you don't have the elements in your model at all yet, um, then you can just create the options, make sure they're active, which I'll show you how to activate the options in a second, um, and then model the new stuff. If you already have something and maybe it's just a, a tweak of what's there, so for example, this is just a tweak of the island and then adding another piece of casework, then you can create the options first, select the objects, and then copy them into those options using the add to set. And what's cool about that is you don't have to worry about copy, 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 paste, 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 redraw, redraw, all this other stuff. It's just taking those elements elements and it's going to create multiple versions of them in the same place within each option. Um, so super powerful and depending on how you're approaching the project, um, you may you may decide to create the options and then just model them right in it or you may be able to take things and, and dump them into different option sets. So now on the bottom right, I'm selecting option two. That's your design option sort of pull um, sort of uh, dialogue down there. So now I'm activating option two. So you'll notice only my casework and option two um, is, is visible uh, as sort of dark black lines and it's uh, selectable. Nothing else is selectable because nothing else is in that option. So you see what I'm doing is I'm actually just drawing using my generic cabinet family. So you see I'm actually rotating this island. Um, <clears throat> so part of this study is, is looking at Okay, what if the island and a couple other casework was were on the the opposite wall facing the sliders, and then you had the the main dining table sort of on this angled piece of of the kitchen. So I'm just kind of turning off some of the some of the visibility parameters that I had set up for this. Um, one of the things that I didn't like about this option is the fact that the slider was there. So it kind of made it awkward to to place the cabinet right up against the slider. So then it's a matter of determining how much space should we give? Should that be an area that you can use? Maybe it becomes a peninsula. It sort of actually just became a little bit awkward. Um, what you're <laughs> what, what you are imagining here is that I'm, I'm kind of trying to to work on the fly based on my sketch on how this actually will look. Now just taking that that wall cabinet and uh, and copying it out to be an island, um, so that it's the same depth and dimension as the as the wall cabinet. Moving it out four feet, three foot, three and a half feet, and then sort of uh, turning off the the upper cabinets, uh, turning on the upper cabinets. You know, just playing with my visibility so that I get the look that I want. And so you can see there, um, we have kind of this um, this galley going in the other direction while keeping the the north wall that I that I'm, I've been calling it uh, along the backside. Um, and again, this is just to sort of see how how the how the eating area works, how the island will work. Um, maybe there's stools, maybe there's not. Um, but it's an easy way to quickly quickly study it. So now, um, if I go and I launch into Enscape, um, you'll see what I'm going to do now is really just look at this, um, look at this option. Here's here's this option now in Enscape, and now I can start feeling how that how that option feels. Looks like I still didn't fix that ceiling yet. I swear I will fix it eventually in this in, during this series, but um, you can see there I'm just sort of looking at this. The other thing you'll notice is now the cabinet's actually interacting with that slope ceiling, which isn't the greatest thing. You know, I, I'm not a huge fan of the fact that um, the door, the sliding door, is right there, and so uh, we can't really um, have the have the um, cabinet sort of butt up against that wall. 
but now look i can flip between option one and option two and it's also real time in endscape because i have live updates on so now i can actually quickly flip between these options and just see in real time how the space feels um, and look at it, look at it from different views look at it from different angles um, and really just explore um, what this option is going to look like so that's it that's that's a real quick overview of design options and i know that was super simple and that's what i wanted it to be and hopefully that was helpful for you guys especially those of you have that have been doing this save as and go through so what this quick design option study told me is that i actually wasn't a fan at all of that other option the one where the galley was sort of facing towards the slider it just didn't work for me where the table was um how it sort of interacted with the slider i just didn't like the flow of everything and it kind of just told me to stop studying that. Um, you know, I did a couple sketches on hand based on that to sort of study what some other things would look like. And, and, I, and I threw the table in and I just didn't like it. And so what I ended up doing before moving to the next episode, which is actually going to be building the kitchen. And what I mean by that is actually building it using real cabinets now and not the generic and, and starting to fill in details like materials and lights and all that cool stuff is, is um, I'm going to show you kind of where the final schematic option landed in my mind. Um, and so that final schematic option um, had a couple changes from what you saw. So here it is here. <clears throat> and what you'll see is that this is the, the I call it the long north wall, the galley kitchen. You'll see there is an island. Um, the one thing I did is I actually sucked those windows up from the floor and I made the countertop run straight across the whole thing. Um, this was based on one of the inspiration photos that, um, that the client sent. And um, you can see that uh, it's a much cleaner look. It has this sort of galley in the back and then you have the, the eating uh, area on the front. And now I also have a place to study um, where I might put the range versus the sink versus the refrigerator and so on and so forth. And then this is what it looks like in Enscape. So this is kind of the final sort of uh, pre-design um, option. Now you'll see how everything kind of faces towards the view. It's taking advantage of the shape of the room. Um, it's putting all the utility stuff back on the north wall, like the refrigerator and the range or the sink, which you'll see we study later. Um, and it really becomes this nice, clean um galley kitchen almost with with sort of an open up towards the view so i really really like this option and uh, and i decided that that was the one that i was going to start detailing forward um, so in the next episode uh, we are going to start building this kitchen we're going to start using cabinets we're going to start using casework we're going to start using actual objects and materials and we're going to fill in this kitchen um, with the sole purpose of creating presentation, conceptual, I guess you can call them schematic design at this point in time, documents to present to the client. Um, so stick around, stay tuned. Thank you to RevitFamily.biz for sponsoring this episode. Thank you for joining me. Definitely subscribe if you guys are enjoying this series. Comment below and uh, I'll see you next time.